When it comes to the criminal justice system and gender, gender is not the sole factor taken into account by the criminal justice system. Gender, race, class, and other social statuses influence the occurrence of crime and their punishments. Proven that men and women are treated differently based solely on their gender despite many people's opinions. However, studies have shown that men and women are more likely to commit certain crimes. Men in jail are more likely than women to be incarcerated for a violent offense than any other type of offense, and women are more likely to be accused or convicted of property offenses, drug offenses, or public order defenses. The number of female prisoners is rising more quickly than the number of male prisoners. Between 1995 and 2000, the number of women incarcerated in state, federal, and private facilities increased by 37.9%, while the number of men incarcerated in prison increased by 26.8%. There is a strong negative societal stigma surrounding mental illness. They are seen as dangerous, yet this stereotype is rarely the case. U.S. crime dramas on television portray mental illness in a certain manner. One example of a U.S. crime drama would be Law & Order. Characters in these shows whom are labeled as having a mental illness had a greater likelihood of committing a crime. While these shows render people dealing with mental health issues, the shows don't show what happens after their trials. A semi-structured interview was given and about 80% had said that they had experienced mental health issues. These include but are not limited to depression, anxiety, and suicidal thoughts. Mental health courts were established to reduce criminal involvement with a person experiencing mental health struggles. These courts used to be restricted to a person charged with a misdemeanor, but nowadays the courts are looking at persons with more serious charges. A study was conducted that resulted in the showing of mental health courts reducing the risk of violence among mental ill criminals. Homoeroticism was actually celebrated up to and throughout the European Renaissance. Once the Catholic Church took charge, they viewed homosexuality as a sin, thus all homosexuals were viewed as demons or incredibly dangerous to society. Over time, we've taken on these stigmas and stereotypes and created the homophobic bias. And although strides have been made, including the 2015 Supreme Court ruling involving the allowance of gay marriage, and also Obama allowing for gays to serve openly in the military, there is still incredible strides to be made for the criminal justice system as a whole due to its rigidity. When the phrase the criminal justice system is brought up, a popular mental response is to think of the police. In a police report, 25% said that they treat LGBT people disrespectfully, 19% admitting to call LGBT people insulting names, 11% admitted to making a negative comment or asking insulting questions about someone's sexuality, and 10% admitted to avoiding contact completely. As a result, many people do not report anti-gay crimes, which in turn causes gay men and lesbians to be more attractive victims for perpetrators of biased crime. Sure. A hate crime is understood to be a crime, most commonly violence, motivated by prejudice, bias, or hatred towards a particular group of which the victim is presumed to be a member. As such, a hate crime is generally directed towards a class of people. The individual victim is rarely significant to the perpetrator and is most commonly a stranger to him or her. Although hate crimes can include verbal harassment, it is documented that nearly 6% of the incidents are actually verbal harassment and 94% were acts which constituted criminal behavior. Although the court system has not allowed homosexuality to be basis for the death penalty, anti-gay animosity held by a jury or even the judge can result in the defendant being found guilty of the crime simply because of their sexuality. More so, three and a half times more people said that they could not be fair and impartial if a party to a case was gay than said they could not be fair if a party was female, black, or Latino. A gross miscarriage of justice is a homosexual panic in which defendants are saying they acted in a violent way because they were on the receiving end of a gay flirtation. This can result in the reduction of murder to manslaughter or even an acquittal of a case. A person's social class plays a big factor into how they get treated in the criminal justice world. Being a celebrity or a big time athlete can greatly help your criminal situation as opposed to someone with a lower social status. In this video, we will take a look at how a person's socioeconomic status helps or hurts them in the criminal justice world. 
Let's first take a look back at Michael Vick's dog fighting case. In April of 2007, authorities searched Michael's property and found that he was highly involved in a big dog fighting scandal. Vick, along with three other members of the dog fighting ring, were convicted of federal offenses and were imprisoned. Michael was suspended from the NFL and had to pay back the Atlanta Falcons his earnings. Eventually, after he got out of prison, he was reinstated in the NFL, but his career has not had the same spark as it did before his scandal. Fortunately, the same cannot be said about convicted criminals of a lower social class. For example, in certain parts of England, young men from working class backgrounds drop out of school and decide to take part in the drug smuggling industry because that is a quick and easy money as opposed to getting an education and getting a worthwhile job. Because of their low income backgrounds, once these young men get in prison, they usually do not have the financial resources to seek bail as most high profile criminals do. Of justice statistics, from 2008 to 2012, the number of low income urban black youths had rates of violent crime similar to low income urban white youths. This shows that race has little effect on crime rates, rather their socioeconomic status is what plays a factor into their criminal intent.